Okay, so let's start with number one. I like to factor 12 on the side. So what's the, when we have a negative, I think it's important to first represent that negative. So the first two factors of negative 12 are negative 1 and 12. So I'm going to give me two more factors of 12. 6 and 2. And two more? 3 and 2. So negative 1, 3, 2, and 2 all make up negative 12. I'm going to write those out. Negative 1, 2, 3, 6, and what am I missing? 12. Okay, what else do I need to add for this to be completely factored? Two A's and three B's. Is everything represented? Yes. Okay, what about this next one? I put the 12 in there. Okay, what about this one? Negative 66. How would I factor negative 66? Negative 1 and 66 first. Then what, Elgin? 33 times what? Good. And how could I break up 33? 11 and 3. So negative 1 times 11 times 3 times 2. Sometimes these are a little more confusing when the trees go in this direction. But does everybody see that? Negative 1 <coughs> times 11 times 3 times 2 makes negative 66. So I need a negative 1. What was the next number? Let's put in ascending order. 2, 3, 11, 66. I think that takes care of all of the numeric portion of it. Now what about the variables? P, Q, and Q. Everything represented? Good. So this is the first part of your homework right here, guys. Yes, Anthony? You do not have to do the tree. Okay? All right. Finding the greatest common factor. This is why I like to do the tree, Anthony. Listen up, because I'm going to show you something right now. What are the factors of 54? 9 and 6? And the factor is 9? 9. 3 and 3? And 6? 2 and 3? Is that as far as I can break it down? So 3 times 3 times 2 times 3 makes 54. All right, let's do the next one over here, 63. You don't have to, I would. 9 times 7 is 63. What about 9? So 3 times 3 times 7 makes 63. So what are my common factors? There's a 3 that they have in common. What else? No, they also have another three in common, right? You put both threes. So the greatest common factor of 54 and 63 is? Nine. Okay, you see where I got nine? I don't just have, they don't have one three in common, they have two threes in common. So two threes would make nine. Questions on this so far? All right, let's do another one. What do you think the answer to this one is, just by glance? 
What's the greatest common factor of 36 and 54? Let me pause it and let you write these down. Okay, so I'm going to be on the safe side and I'm going to do a factor tree for both of these. How many factor 36 for me? 6 times 6? 2 times 3 times 2 times 3. Too much talking. Somebody factor 54 for me. 9 and 6. 3 times 3. 2 times 3. So the factors of 36 are 2, 3, 2, 3, and 54 are 3, 3, 2, and 3. What do they have in common? They have 2 in common. They have a 3 in common. And another 3 in common. So 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. Their greatest common factor is 18. You may have not seen that, right? If you hadn't have factored it all out. So 18 times 2 is 36, and 18 times 3 is 54. See how that works? Yeah, because these two numbers right here, these are all the factors of 36. And I can multiply them in whatever order I want to, Elgin, and it'll always make 36. Yes? No. What do you mean? So you have to take out the numbers that they both have in common. That's why we call it the greatest <coughs> common factor. All right? It's the largest number that they both have in common. And in order to find it, sometimes it's kind of hidden. So in order to find it, this is the easiest way to do it, to use a factor tree to break your numbers down. So it would be 18. They both have not two x's in common. There's only one x over here compared to two over here. So they have an x in common. Do they both have a y in common? Yes. Do they have a z in common? No. So that's my answer right there. 18xy. Let's do this one. I have 12. What are my factors of 12? 6 and 2, 2 and 3. My factors of 8, 4 and 2, and 2 and 2. And my factors of 16, 4 and 4, 2 and 2. Two and two. Randy, you're whistling. It needs practice. Maybe after school? Oh, is that a yes? Okay. Randy's going to come after school and practice whistling. Okay. So, what do we have in common? No, don't be sorry. We'll, we'll practice together after school. Okay. So, two and two and two. They all have a 2 in common. Do they have anything else in common? Another 2. Isn't there another 2 over here? Yes. They have two 2's in common. Each one of these numbers has two 2's in common. So what is two 2's? 4. Four. And they, do they all have a Q? No. Do they all have an R? How many? Do they all have an S? No. There's my answer. <coughs> there, this one doesn't have a 3. And this one doesn't have a 3. Get it? Okay, so for number 5 and number 6, let's try these out. 17 is a prime number. <coughs> 1 and 17. And 5 is also a prime number. So what do both of these have in common? 1. Do we normally write a 1 in front? No. They have a D in common. How many Ds do they have in common? 2. So, D squared would be the greatest common factor of these two monomials. What about this one? Let's factor these two. 22, 2 and 11, and 32, 
eight and four, which is four times two, which is two times two, which I really don't have to go any further, right? Because the only thing they have in common is two. Do you have P's in common? How many? And a Q? And an R? And a T? Nope, that's the only thing they have in common. Greatest common factor. I have one more for you. This is all you're doing for homework. Here's number seven. Write this one down and then turn to all, you guys are in groups of four. So do the problem and then when we do showdown, it means you turn around and see if you have the same answer as the people in your group of four. Okay, so we know that 42 has a 6 in there, and 18 has a 6 in there, and 6 is the highest number for 6, so it must be 6a squared would be my answer. Good job.